I saw a lot of death. I saw a lot of dead and sick animals. And that was just in a two week time frame. I can only imagine the sheer volume of this on a monthly or yearly basis. So today I thought I would talk about my experience working in a chain pet store. Now I am not the most qualified person to talk about this. This was only two weeks worth of work experience and it was a long while ago but those two weeks were enough to show me everything I needed to see to know that one, I never wanted to work there again and two, I never wanted to support or purchase animals from a chain pet store ever again so I thought this would be interesting to kind of give you a backstory as to why I'm so vocal about not purchasing animals from pet stores. So I'm not going to say the actual name of the pet store because I just don't have time for a lawsuit right now but I'm sure you can narrow down which one it is because there's not that many chain pet stores in the UK so I'm sure you can figure it out but although this is not a recent experience for me I did recently make a TikTok briefly talking about my experience and a lot of employees or ex-employees that have recently quit basically confirmed all of the things I'm about to tell you are still happening to some degree so it is still relevant. One more disclaimer before I start on some of these stories, I have nothing against any of the employees that work there. A job is a job at the end of the day and you can't help where you work but some stores are better than others and that is down to the employees but there's only so much you can do when there's certain policies in place and the actual company high up is refusing to make positive changes so nothing against anyone that works in these stores. Some of the people that work there are really lovely people and they really do care about the animals. So moving on to my experience of working there, I saw a lot of death. I saw a lot of dead and sick animals and that was just in a two week time frame. I can only imagine the sheer volume of this on a monthly or yearly basis. So one of my jobs as the new person was doing something called a DFC and this stands for dead fish check. Apparently they've changed this to a new code name, but it's still very much a thing. Basically what this was, was every single hour you had to go around the fish tanks and record any dead fish and scoop them out. And every single hour there was at least one dead fish, sometimes as many as 20. So that was pretty much what most of my day consisted of was picking out dead fish. And you weren't allowed to talk about this in front of the customers. That's why they have a code name for it. And I did get told off once for talking about dead fish to one of the other employees when there was customers nearby because they don't want people knowing just how often fish are dying in the stores. And when you pick them out, bag them up, you have to take them out of the back to the freezer. They have like a big mass freezer. And in there was a bunch of mammals, things like dead rabbits, dead guinea pigs, sometimes even dead dogs from the vets next door. So that was delightful having to do that every single hour. And most of the time, it was more towards the higher end of about 10, 20 fish per hour. Now to some people, this is not gonna be that shocking because they are just fish, but I still value them. Of course, there's gonna be some losses, but there's definitely things you can do to kind of limit how many. There should not be that many happening on an hourly basis. Things like the way you transport them, the way you quarantine them, and not sharing the same water system. So the next thing that I had an issue with was the way the animals were delivered to the stores. I experienced two delivery days in the two weeks I was working there, and that was all of the baby animals coming in off a lorry in big plastic storage tubs. I say big, not that big, compared to how many rabbits were in a tub of about this size, but they come in off the lorries in mixed sexes, Bear in mind, most rodents and rabbits, they can breed from about five to six weeks old. These were seven, eight week old animals mixed together in mixed sexes. And then once they arrived in the store, you had to sort them into separate cages based on their sex and just hope that you'd done it right. A lot of people will try to tell you that chain pet stores get their animals from local breeders. And although they might come from somewhere locally, I don't know of any ethical breeder that would be happy for babies they've raised and put their time into to be transported in the back of a van in mixed sexes with the chance of them getting pregnant very, very young that can be really risky for them to then be put into a holding room with no window, no natural lighting in very small pet store cages. And they can be in these for weeks until there's time for them on the shop floor. I just don't know any breeder, any good breeder, that would be okay with that. 
And these holding rooms out the back are not very big, so they don't have that much space for the animals. I'm talking, at least when I was there, four to five baby mini lops in a rabbit cage that's not really big enough to be a rabbit cage, that's maybe 100 by 50 centimetres, four to five baby rabbits in that space. And if none of the rabbits out the front in the store get bought for a week, two weeks, those babies are then back there, growing and living in such a tiny space. So not good, not good enough for me. Also one time when I was there, we had a delivery of robos and I was like, where do I put them? There's no spare cages. Every single cage back here has hamsters or gerbils in. All they had was like a critter trail cage and there was like 10 robos. So all of those were squished into this one cage and it was just awful. The next thing looking back that was a bit dodgy to me was their quarantine or isolation room. When I spoke about this on TikTok, everyone kind of got the wrong idea that I had a problem, that that existed. I think the existence of that is good, just only if it actually functions as a quarantine room, which when I was there, it didn't really. So this room is right next door to the holding room for the new baby animals, so any animals that arrive and appear sick, or any animals from the storefront that appear sick, they will go into this quarantine room and receive vet treatment, which is good, um, until they get better or until they pass away. So this room usually had six social animals living alone, things like guinea pigs, rabbits, rats, all by themselves whilst they receive treatment. And the thing that I had the issue with when I was there at least, maybe it was just my store, but there was no signage on the outside saying to wash your hands. There was no like hand sanitizer dispensers. You didn't have to wear gloves or PPE to go in there. So there was nothing to stop you transmitting whatever diseases or illnesses those animals had between the new animals, the animals in store, and then going back into the quarantine room. There was no procedure in place to stop you transmitting that illness. So that did seem a bit pointless to me. One particular story that I remember from my time of working there is one of the employees, she was obsessed with guinea pigs and she had a lot of her own guinea pigs at home but when one of the guinea pigs in the store got sick, I can't remember what she said was wrong with it but it was on the brink of death and needed round the clock care and medication so she took it home out of the goodness of her own heart and she nursed it back to health and then when it was better or mostly better, she then returned it to the store but me and her were on the tills, on the checkout, and she looked over to the guinea pig section and she was like, wait a minute, that's the guinea pig that I took home. I didn't realise that he was even back on the storefront for sale. I think she was kind of tempted to purchase him and take him back home, but someone had put him back in the storefront and not told her, and he was for sale to the general public. So whoever bought that guinea pig, would have no backstory and no knowledge of its near-death experience because she was the only one that really knew that guinea pig and they probably didn't get told so someone was sold a guinea pig that might have had lifelong health issues and they would have no idea. The next story still makes me feel sick when I think about it. This guy came into the store, this big muscly guy. He also had another guy with him that didn't say a word the whole time. He comes up to the checkout and he's like, I want to buy two rabbits. And the employee with me was like, okay, um, we've got mini lots, we've got smaller breeds, what are you interested in? And he was like, I don't care, I just want two rabbits. So that was quite suspicious to start with, but she starts filling out the check form. Obviously things like, do you have an enclosure? Do you have this? Do you know about rabbits? Taking it all off, and of course he's answering it, but he's being really blunt and not very interested. Doesn't seem happy about the whole experience, but as he's filling out this check form to purchase rabbits, he looks over to the adoption section and I think there was two adult English spot rabbits in there and he's like, they're bigger, they'll do, I'll have them instead. So this seemed really sketchy but because I was not an official employee, I couldn't sell pets to people and I also didn't have a say in the sale of pets so I was just watching this unfold. She gave them to him, boxed them up and when he left, she came over to me and she was like, oh my god, I hope he's not using them as bait for his dogs. So the next story is about one of the hamsters escaping in the middle of the night. One of the doors on the enclosure was broken. One of the Syrians escaped and was running around the store. This, of course, set off the alarm system and the police were called in the middle of the night thinking there was an intruder or someone breaking in. 
there wasn't, it was just a hamster running around and the manager was called and she managed to catch it and put it back but I was talking to her the next morning and forgive me I can't remember the exact specific times or the specific numbers but she was saying that hamsters if they escape they get about a week before they have to call an exterminator if they can't catch them but other things like rats I think she said they only get like two to three days. So I thought that was really interesting. Obviously they can't have rats running around the store forever if they can't catch them, but it was really interesting to me that hamsters get a certain amount of time to live and rats got way less. One of the days I was standing there stocking the shelves and a customer comes up behind me, not knowing of course that I'm just on work experience because I'm wearing like a full uniform, obviously to represent the company, but she comes up, she has a little cardboard box and inside was a Chinese hamster that had been completely ripped apart by another hamster. Um, she bought them the previous week. She had been sold two Chinese hamsters and was told they were social, they can live together, they should live together um, in the same cage. And it had just been completely ripped apart and attacked by the other hamster. At this point, I was pretty much the only person around and anyone else that would have come along could have just given her the same wrong advice. So I was like, he's gonna have to see a vet, make them pay for it. And also while you're here, get a spare cage ASAP because you cannot put them back together. So one example of many that I've heard of the employees giving out the wrong advice, whether it's not having social animals together or housing hamsters together and it resulting in either pregnancy of a young animal, or the injury, or even death. The last story I want to tell you is about my chinchilla. This one is still a really sore subject because if he had survived, I would probably still have him, I would have got him a friend, and I probably wouldn't have rats. It would have completely changed my course of history because I could have been making chinchilla videos instead. I wouldn't have had space for chinchillas and rats, and I would of course continue to own them, so that completely changed my pet owner journey with him not being here, of course, because I don't have a chinchilla and I only had him for a week. So when I started my work experience, there was already a chinchilla in the back in the isolation room and he had been in there weeks before I even started, but no one really knew what was wrong with him. He had seen their vet and he wasn't on any sort of medication, but he just wasn't really eating and drinking as well as a chinchilla should. No one really knew, no one really said what was the problem, but he was just in there for a while and not really doing very good. He was quite thin and quite skinny. And as soon as I saw him, I just fell in love with him and I would spend all of my spare time just sitting there, talking to him, handing him food and encouraging him to eat. And he did actually start to eat when I was in his presence. So at the end of my work experience, they let me take him home. So still to this day, I will say he was one of the best pets I have ever had. He was of course a typical chinchilla. He would run around and bounce off things. He loved to use his dust bath, but he would always come back and sit on your lap and snuggle with you. I don't know if this was because he was sick and something was wrong with him, but he was a very affectionate chinchilla, which isn't always the case. Usually they are quite shy and nervous, but he would love to sit on your lap and have his chin tickled. He was just the best, he was so sweet, and I did only get a week with him, but one day I woke up and I didn't hear him kind of scuttling around. I had him in my bedroom. I didn't hear anything from his cage, and I just got a sinking feeling. I just knew that something was wrong, and I called my mum, and I didn't even check on him. I was like, something is definitely wrong, and I lifted up his little house, and he was dead. So I just don't know what it was that caused his death. Obviously there was something long term that was going on. Before I even met him, he had a bunch of issues that were kind of unresolved. And what I suspect had happened because he didn't really poop very much. Obviously when I first met him, he wasn't really eating very much, but when I got him home, he was eating a bunch, but nothing was really coming out the other side. So I suspect he had some sort of genetic or internal issue with his organs or his digestive system. That's just my guess as to what happened, but he was so sweet, he deserved to not live the short life that he did. And I was really excited. I was excited about our future together. I was planning a big massive cage and to get him a friend. And I was robbed of that. So that traumatized me, that put me off ever purchasing a pet from there again because I did pay for him, although they let me take him home. They had to physically put him out the front of the store for sale 
for me to then buy him with my own money um, and then if I hadn't got there they did tell me the day that he was going to be put out but if I didn't buy him someone else would have and they would have had to go through the same heartache so yeah so that was Coda's story and what happened with Coda and that really opened my eyes up to never purchase an animal from a chain pet store again especially after the two weeks of some of the sketchy things I witnessed that was the literal final nail in the coffin for me to never support that particular store or chain pet stores in general when it comes to purchasing animals because that completely put me off and really opened up my eyes. Now of course there were positive things that did occur in the store, things like making sure that animals had fresh water every single day and that it was changed every single day and they did have access to fresh vegetables and were given a variety on a daily basis but those things to me are the bare minimum, they don't outweigh all of the bad things, things like the lack of space or the lack of social company for some animals, there was a rat in the back of the store that was there the entire two weeks, people seemed to forget about it, I don't think anyone in that store was a massive fan of rats and it didn't get much attention and it was by itself but things like that don't outweigh all of the bad things and definitely don't excuse them for happening. Of course, another good thing is that they do have access to vet care, my chinchilla and also the guinea pig that was sick. They were taken to their on-site vets and some of them were treated. I would say past the initial appointment, they didn't really look too much into some of the issues. Of course, there's not much you can do if an animal has a genetic issue due to where they source the animals from. There's not much they can do about that, but some animals received better vet care than others but it is good that they had some vet care, I suppose. But those are the main things that I can really remember from my time of working there. There's probably a few things I've forgotten that happened that were equally as bad, if not worse, but these are the main things that have really stuck with me all these years later, which is saying a lot because they have been really impactful and definitely changed the way that I view the animal industry and where I source my animals from. But that is my story of doing work experience at a chain pet store. I think in total during just my two weeks of working there, I probably saw hundreds of dead fish, one dead rat, one dead guinea pig, and also my chinchilla that died. That is a lot to see in just two weeks. God knows how many are dying on a monthly or yearly basis that happened after I left and still possibly continue to happen. So I hope this has been interesting and kind of opened your eyes up to look more into where you source your animals from, where you put your money, where you support, and possibly where you choose to work because if you think working in a pet store is gonna be playing with cute baby animals all day, it is definitely not. So I hope this video has been interesting. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.